see what Lori's got, what kind of juice she's got here. Grab those handles on the ends, huh? Sam, there you go. Now let's see what you can do here. Lift it up a little higher. Up, up, no? Oh, wait, I feel it there. There you go. I feel it now. That's it. Kind of shake it back and forth there. Yeah, the ladder needs some work, that's for sure. Okay. You just kind of have to lift it and shake it back and forth to get it in there. There, there we you go. go. And here's Todd's favorite. And then a pan in the door, which is going to get modified because yes. it's dumb. Well, you're the modification man. Yeah. This is getting. There we go. Do them at the same time. No? Yeah. Well. Who knows? Get one started. This is dumb. Well, I can tell you one thing. It ain't going to stay this way. No. Here we are at the back of the uh, XPV2 and right in the middle of the shot there you see the ladder. Now this ladder is part of the base. This is the base of the camper. This is the flatbed of the truck right here. The base separates from the flatbed here and then the base goes from here to the base of the camper. Now this is put on here as an additional accessory because the height of the flatbed is too low and it has to get the cab over up over the cab. So you have to raise the, the base up a little bit higher. And this is basically three inches, roughly. Well, it's actually closer, almost closer to four because each one of these channels is like an inch and three quarter, but it doesn't really matter. They put this pull-out ladder, and this is the ladder that you enter the door with. So it pulls out, goes to the ground, um, and deploys so that you can walk up the stairs. It's pretty steep, there's three steps. The issue I'm having is it's just poorly manufactured. I don't know what else I can really say other than it's just not very good. Uh, it doesn't slide very well. It gets in the way because the pieces aren't lined up. So let me just show you some of its shortcomings that we're gonna improve upon so that it will slide in and out of this slot effortlessly, effortlessly. <laughs> Easily, how about that? Anyway, let me pull it out. I'm going to pull it out here so it ends up on top of my work table. It's not going to flat, it's not going to go down. And you can hear it's just dragging on the flat bed itself. Okay, at that point, I took the stops out. It's supposed, there's two stops that are supposed to be installed here and on the other side, and they're supposed to stop this. This is the slider uh, that comes out. Now right off the bat, I don't know if you can tell, but this is a piece of Delrin that's riveted in to the slider. Why they would put the Delrin, which is supposed to be the sliding surface, on the top of the slider, I have no idea. I mean, all of the gravity and weight, Here's my air compressor. What I was saying is this is a piece of Delrin and it's made to slide, I'm assuming it's made to slide in this channel right here. This is a piece of inch and three quarter square leg channel. This Delrin, I would think you would want it to slide inside the channel. But my thing is, is why wouldn't you put this on the bottom of here? So then when you shove it in and out, it's sliding right here. That's the first issue that I just can't seem to understand. The second issue, and I don't know if you can notice it, let me shove this back in far enough to get on that slider, is the piece here, because this is on top, the actual structure falls down onto the flatbed. Here's the channel, and there's the flatbed. And it just falls down. Look at it. 
See, now it's on it, but as soon as you put it on this side, it falls off the other side. I mean, it, it just doesn't make any sense at all. It's, it's just, it's not wide enough. I, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Every time you pull it out, right there, it is like an eighth of an inch on this one and maybe an eighth of an inch on the other one. Watch, I'll just move it and you'll hear it fall. Off the other side, that far. That's all it, fall, that's all it takes for it to fall off that channel. Well, needless to say, it makes it very difficult to pull in and out when it's sliding across the flatbed of the, of the actual truck itself. So we're going to remanufacture this and fix it. If anybody was wondering, this is what the stairs look like when they're deployed. It's a three stair set. Goes into the back of the camper through that door, and that little hatch right there you see right above it. Another thing that I don't seem to understand, and maybe it'll become clear to me as I work on this, is why they put this pivot so close to this slider. Every time you pull it out, it binds on the truck bed and mars it right here. Why they just didn't extend this square tube another inch or, or close and just put this pivot a half inch farther out this way and this pivot a half inch farther out this way and it would never come in contact with this face of this flat bit right here. So I'm gonna do that too, move this out and see if that helps with the function. Okay, this is the unit out of the truck. Holds down pretty flat. The issue I have right now, I mean, I'm gonna have to do something about the, these angles and the stairs and all that, because it's, you know, lacks a lot of finish. But the issue I have is the Delrin. You can see this rivet already snapped off. I've had this two weeks, used it for two weeks. The Delrin's on the top, see it? There's the top of the stairs, there's the top of the slider. And it's not wide enough. It's just not wide enough. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm thinking about this a lot, is I'm gonna order some Delrin from McMaster Car, and get it in, and instead of just putting a piece of Delrin, piece of Delrin here, I'm going to cut a piece of Delrin that takes up this whole side and that's about an inch thick. I'm gonna countersink some screws down the side through the Delrin to hold it on the side and glue it down here too. And I chamfer the corners of the Delrin off and make it exactly or close to being exactly the width of the channel that's in the truck. So it slides up and down that channel like it should. Do the same thing on the other side and of course, I'm gonna to have to cut the width down just slightly here. So I'll take this apart, cut the width down, and I'll match it. I'll make the Delrin to almost the exact width of that, uh, you know, uh, rails that are inside the flatbed. And then I'm gonna try that and see how it slides back and forth. And if it works good, then I'll proceed with extending these just slightly and reworking these rails on the side and everything. These aren't too bad, but I'm gonna take it one step at a time and see how I can make this better. The plan for this project today is to make this slider go in and out, build it so it'll go in and out of those rails in the uh, truck bed smoothly. They put Delrin on the tops, which I still can't figure out why they put it on the tops, but I think they just screwed up and when they built this, they probably built it, put the Delrin on it, and then when they went to put the ladder on it, they left it upside down, but should have put the ladder on it this way so the pivots would be here. 
But either way, it doesn't really matter at this point because I'm just going to change it. Let's think about cutting this down to 12 inch. The Delrin I have is 12 by 24. I'm going to put a Delrin slider on the end here. Let's think about cutting it down so the Delrin goes end to end, but I don't think it really matters. I think, um, you know, because I got to bolt the Delrin through all the way through here. I'm going to recess the screws inside, make the Delrin probably at least an inch thick or so. So I think I'm just going to make it the thickness of here and just leave the ends off. I don't think it's going to really matter. <clears throat> right now they have basically two inches of Delrin surface to slide on. I'm going to turn it into 12 inches. So I think it'll be fine. Okay, the slot that's in the flatbed is 34 inches wide. These side pieces are an inch and a half. So, all I gotta do, thinking about making the Delrin, I don't know, let's get the sheet and look at it. Okay, this, this sheet is an inch and three quarters thick by 24, boy, this stuff is heavy. So, I was thinking about making the ends an inch thick so I had plenty of space to bolt through it and recess the bolts, but I don't know. Let's go look at the channel. The channel's looks like about seven eighths deep. And I don't really want to put it real far out from there. The farther it gets away, the weaker it'll be. Yeah, let's just go with an inch. It should work perfect. That way. If it gets too tight in here, I can always cut it down a little bit too. I can always mill the back of the Delrin down to give me more space. I've been debating whether to cut this down to 12 inches or leave it its full length. <clears throat> and uh, I think I'm going to cut it down because I don't know if you can see in the corners there. They mitered these corners when they welded it together. And I don't know if you can see, but there's basically no penetration at all in that joint. I mean, none. It doesn't even come through. I don't know if you can see. This one's a little better. You see that one? None. There's no weld all the way through to the back side. Look at this one. This one's wide open. I'm going to flip it this way. Wide open. You have some cutoff slag there. Anyway, I'm just going to cut these off to get rid of these really bad welds and uh, weld it on the end. I didn't show you all the cutting and buffing and sanding and everything because it's quite boring. The sides are all I said I changed my mind and cut the width down. The Delrin takes up this whole length. I'm going to leave the ends open. Of course clean these up. That way when I through bolt this I can reach in there and put a nut on that and then the rest of them will be drilled all the way through from side to side. Oh, well, I'll put a bolt here, 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 and there, one on each end. I haven't decided whether I'm going to put some gussets in the corner to help keep it square, keep it from twisting. I might just do that. Don't know yet. So, let's get this welded together and see what it looks like. Welding's done. 
Now I just have to clean off some of these welds. They're a little proud here and there. I've welded up some of the cut marks that were in the uh, old tubing, and then I gotta clean these corners out to smooth them. Clean this off here. Just smooth it down a little bit. And once I get that measured up, it looks like right now I'm gonna need about an inch and about a sixteenth or an inch and an eighth. I think I'm gonna cut them an inch and an eighth and then mill them down until they fit in there perfectly. We'll have to see. But let's get this let's see sitting on the welds there. Kind of proud. I got the uh, frame done, pretty much done. I still have to drill holes, but I want to cut, go move on to the friction material next. Now, I made this frame so that it was exactly 31 and 3 quarters wide. The slot's 34, almost exactly 34. So, I'm going to cut an inch and an eighth of material in the Stelrin right here. Inch and eighth, inch and eighth will make it exactly, in theory, I mean, it'll be exactly 34. I don't know if those two rail, rails in the uh, camper are running exactly parallel to each other. Um, if it's like a lot of the other stuff that's built on this uh, flatbed, they probably aren't. So, but I'm going to cut them extra thick because I can always mill the back down a little bit more to thin these up. So I'm gonna mark this out, cut it on the bandsaw at an inch and an eighth. This is 12 inches right on the money, and the sled is 12 inches right on the money. So this will go down the side. I'm going to chamfer the corners off, and then I'm gonna drill four bolts and recess them in. Now I have some, some truss head bolts, uh, machine screws or whatever you wanna call them. Um, that I'm going to recess in so they don't rub on the channel. Uh, and I'll do that on the bridge port so that I can exactly get the center and then I'll put a uh, milling cutter in them to just mill them flat in the bottom there. So let's set up the bandsaw and we'll get that done. I'm gonna mark it a little thick so that way if the bandsaw blade has a little bit of run out in it, I can mill it down flat. Okay, so that should be probably an inch and a quarter. Yep, inch and a quarter. So let's cut that off on the saw. I need to be faster. Let's, let's speed this up. I'm guessing that's probably the wrong blade to use to cut this, but it's the only blade I got, so we're just gonna have to make it work. I never milled this Delrin, so. Let's see how it works. Well, the sides definitely aren't square. Either that or my Kurt Vice is really off. This uh, parallel is perfect. This one's really loose, so obviously the sides aren't square to the back. This is the factory cut down here. 
I think. Oh no, this is my cut, so no wonder. So I'll just square the top here. I'll just mill this top off flat, and then we'll uh, flip it over. See how it goes. Cut's pretty good. It's leaving some things on here. Maybe the the bit's going a little bit fast. I'm gonna slow it down and bring it up a little bit. That's a much nicer finish. Okay, that's a pretty good surface. It's not, it's, I mean, it's not as smooth as the factory surface, but not too bad. It'll work for what I want it to do. Just interested in squaring this up and getting it relatively flat. I mean, it is going to be sliding in and out of two aluminum rails that have been welded into the truck, so you know how flat those are probably going to be. Let's see if that helped out with it. Much nicer. Yeah, now the parallels are tight. And that was a little loose. Okay, now those parallels are tight in there. So I'm gonna mill off the other side and see what I come up with. I found out that this stuff doesn't like uh, a really fast surface uh, speed. Actually, it likes to go pretty slow and these chips kind of curl off there. The faster you go, the more it melts. I'm shooting for an inch and an eighth thick. And right now, I'm just, you know, going with just a regular ruler. It's not super accurate. Doesn't have to be right on the money. Looks like we're inch and three sixteenths right now, so I'm gonna take another sixteenth off. One point one three eight. Let's see what the other side is. Point one three three. I'd say that's pretty close. Close enough for me at least. Let's measure the channel. I got both pieces milled down. At least the sides are square. So let's measure this channel and see exactly how tall it is. I just measured it with a tape measure before. Okay, it says it's 1.735. Now, looking in there, I'm gonna need some clearance. This is a piece of square leg aluminum. Chances are pretty good. This isn't perfectly square because it's been welded all the way down. Clearance inside the camper. So I'm gonna have to leave some clearance. Uh, let's figure out what that's gonna be. This is 1775. I'm sure, this one's probably the same. Yeah, 1776. It's basically the same. Both of them, they're the same thickness. Well, almost the same thickness. This one's, I wanted to be 1 and 8, and it's 1.39. This one is. And this one's one point. One five six. Did I say the other was? 
This is 1.156, this, that one's 1 1.139. So they're within acceptable range. But the, what I was saying is, is I gotta get the width down so they'll fit in the channel. The channel was 1.73. Hmm. I don't know if, I guess if I leave a 16th maybe. Let's try just the 16th first and go from there. The frame with the sliders on, See, they're just gonna go on each end like this. And then I'm gonna drill and countersink uh, a bolt right through here. Or you can reach the nut on the inside and then the rest of these will go all the way through. I'm gonna put four down the side here. I think it'd be more than enough. Um, try to equally space them. So our next, the next process I need to do is to take it back over to the bridge port and set this up, drill the four holes, and then countersink them so that they have a nice flat bottom to uh, bear off on. This uh, Delrin is gonna be slightly high on the top and that's the way I want it. I want it to be even with the bottom of this inch and a half because it's sliding in that groove and that groove is an eighth of an inch and that channel inside the thing is an eighth of an inch thick on the bottom so that'll uh, let this thing slide across the uh, flatbed tray by one eighth of an inch will have an eighth of an inch clearance because it slides in and out. Okay, so three quarter in, three quarter inch in from the end, and then three and a half on each one. So three and a half there, three and a half there, three and a half there. All right, let's change out this uh, to a mill cutter. Let's see how this cuts. I'm just trying to make a pocket that's a quarter inch deep to fit that screw into. really doesn't not much of a plunge one there's a tooth flute with a little bit different angle on it See how that fits. I have to redrill the hole. Hmm. All right, I like it. It's down in there far enough where it won't interfere with the slide as it goes back and forth. Okay. Now all I got to do is seven more. So I can get the focus on this thing. You can see it drilled the holes and then uh, milled out a recess in there so the bolt will go in. And there's a bolt to the side of that piece right there. Go through. These ones will go all the way through and then these ones will just bolt on the inside. This is the uh, hardware. that way it's recessed in that pocket right there. 
Now if these ever wear out, let me just mill up a couple more and throw them on there. It's going to bolt it together and see how it slides. Oh, by the way, I had it in the, uh, when I had it in the bridge, I just, you know, chamfered off these corners right here so, you know, it would slide a little bit easier. Okay, I want this to be flush with the base. So this is the bottom. I want it to be perfectly flat with that. It looks like it's actually pretty close. Something happened to that one. Wow. Okay. Well, something happened to that one, because now it's stuck. Probably got a piece of aluminum in there and I didn't even notice it. And now it's wedged on there. Let me try this one. I mean, it's a lock nut, but it shouldn't be frozen on there. Here's Lori out cutting the grass. Weird. Well, I'm gonna have to get a regular quarter 20 and see what... Yeah, it's just stripping the threads. Wow, that is weird. Hmm. Well, either something's getting caught in there or there's something in these quarter 20 nuts. You get a regular one. Yeah, I think it's just uh, stuff getting in the threads. Now I'm going to cut this one off. See if I can get it off the impact. Nope. Okay, got that one out. Just cut it off. Just put a regular nut in here for now. Gotta cut these end ones down. Shorten them up a little bit. Then we'll flip it around and do the other side. Shorten these ones up. Let's see if I have any better luck with uh, them in here. Okay, that one went in no problem. So it must have got some metal or something on the threads to bind it up. Sounds like Lori's done with the grass. Here she comes. Go and see how it fits in the truck. Oh yeah. Look at that. Oh that's beautiful. It's a little uh, piece of uh, welding splatter right there. So I have to get rid of that. 
that's nice. Let me get the final. I'm going to take this whole camper off this flatbed and look at the whole slider from front to back. Man, that's almost perfect. Wow. I'm surprised I got that on the first try. It's very little side to side play, maybe a 30 second. It doesn't really rack too much. Wow, that's way better than the original. <laughs>